All right, so let's take a look at doing some divisions. And because multiplication and division are related operations, it shouldn't come as a surprise that any method we have of doing a multiplication immediately translates into a method for doing a division. So one of the approaches we had to doing multiplication was through the use of the distributive property. We can also use the distributive property to construct a method for doing division. And that comes about in the following way. So my distributive property gives me a relationship between a product and a sum. So here the product A times quantity B plus C is the same as A times B plus A times C. And so this gives us a couple of steps that we have. First of all, I can reverse that multiplication B plus C times A. And then my definition of division says that B plus C is D divided by A. Now let's think about this. This B and this C are actually going to be rewritable in a certain way. BA equals BA, again, is the same as. So that says by my definition of division, BA divided by A is going to be B. Likewise, CA divided by A is going to be C. And so these two sumands over here can be rewritten as quotients, BA divided by A, CA divided by A, and that's still my quotient D divided by A. And here's the important thing, which is that we know that D is AB plus AC. So this D I can replace with AB plus AC and divide by A. And so that says that in general, if I have a sum divided by something, I can break that apart as each of the add ends divided by the same thing. This looks a lot like the distributive property for multiplication. I can distribute the multiplication across a sum. I can distribute the division across a sum. And it looks a lot like the distributive property for multiplication. And it's not an accident because multiplication and division are closely related operations. So let's take a look at this in practice. So here's a problem, find 540 divided by 45. And so the question to ask here is, I'd like to find something that I wouldn't mind dividing by 45. And maybe the way to start is to think about finding this 540 and I'm going to break it into something that is obviously divisible by 45 and then whatever we happen to have left over we'll deal with later on. So for example I might take this 540 and if I break that into 450 plus 90 well that is easy to divide by 45. And I do have this 90 that's left over, so I'll have to think about what 90 divided by 45 is. But at the very least, I can rewrite my division this way. And I now have a really easy part, 450 divided by 45. That's just going to be 10. And 90 divided by 45, well, here's where knowing what division is, I'm also answering the question 45 times what gives us 90. And if I think about that for a moment, uh, 45 times 2 is 90. So this second quotient, 90 divided by 45, is 2. And this first quotient here is 10. So my overall quotient, 10 plus 2, is equal to 12. Well, that worked out pretty well. Let's consider another problem. How about 425 divided by 17? So here's an easy one to think about. I can split off the 170s pretty easily because, again, 170 divided by 17, that's something I can do without any real difficulty. So I'll split off a 170 and have what's left over, split off another one and have something left over. And so that tells me that 425 divided by 17 is just 170 divided by 17 plus 170 divided by 17, plus whatever's left over divided by 17. Again, easy, easy, somewhat more difficult. We have to think about that for a moment. But again, I can ask the question, 17 times what gives you 85? And after a little bit of effort, we find that 17 times 5 gives us 85. So our quotient is 10, 10, and 5, which we can reduce to 25.